Hello, I'm Mike from musicradiocreative.com. In this video, I'll show you how to make your audio sound better in Wirecast Pro. So here I am inside Wirecast Pro. No, I mean it, really. Here I am inside Wirecast Pro. And I'm gonna show you how to improve your audio using native effects only available in the Pro version of Wirecast. So let's go in first of all, uh, now we've got our visual set up. We've got our Scarlett 2i2 as an audio shot here on a secondary layer. And I'm gonna go into the window menu and look for my audio mixer. This will show me, whoop, over there. <laughs> the Scarlett 2i2 USB audio is a live source. It's currently going out live on the stream. And these are my output levels as well. So as you can see, I'm going down at quite a low level between minus 12 and minus 60 dB. That is fine as a starting point, but now we can start adding in effects if you're using the pro version of Wirecast. Uh, what would I recommend? Well, not delay unless you're doing something sci-fi, because as you'll hear, it, it sounds, sounds rather, rather bizarre and, and rather, rather alien, alien to have to delay on your voice. But hey, you might need that for something you're doing. Uh, so delay is there as a feature. You can change the amount of delay so it can be wider or tighter, whatever you fancy. Dynamics is my favorite for improving the sound of your voice. Let me add it and I'll show you how to set it up as well. Click into the cog here and we can change the threshold. I'm gonna turn that down to about minus 25, ratio up to three to one. These are just my settings, your mileage may vary. Turn the output up so it's uh, quite a bit louder and you'll hear there now that uh, I'm sounding good. Attack down to the minimum, release down to about 50 milliseconds and that's kind of where I would start with this. Next, I can put some gating on which will turn off the audio whenever I go silent, so any room noise will be obliterated. Turning the threshold up ever so slightly to around minus 30 to start with, attack down to minimum and release down to 100 milliseconds. When I go quiet, the room will go completely silent. There you go, that's gating in action. Set it too aggressively though, it's gonna start cutting off my words like this and oh. Hello, loud, loud. Uh, to really hear my audio. So minus 25 to minus 30 is where you want that. And now you've got gating, you've got everything sounding really, really good. On next, and we'll go to the um, de-esser. De-esser is particularly good. Uh, if we go into the cog here, threshold of minus 30 is good. Set the frequency in your voice where you're most sibilant. I know for me it's 6,000, but you can record some sample audio into Adobe Audition, analyze it with a spectral frequency display, go like that and see the frequency where you are sounding most sibilant. Uh, set up a de -esser. It will just help you to get rid of those high-end treble sounds that distort and sometimes uh, interfere with the ear quite a bit. Uh, next, we'll go in. Uh, we'll look at EQ. Again, a very rudimentary EQ here, but I like quite a bit of high end, so maybe a decibel increase there, uh, maybe half a decibel of mid range and a tiny bit of bass, but not too much. Really, we don't want to go nuts with the EQ. After that, you've got loudness. If you're conforming to loudness standards, you might want to add this in and say, I want it at uh, 9.6, or usually it's 16 dB uh, uh, for streaming purposes. Uh, but for me, I'm going to remove that. These three are pretty much enough for me. You've got another limiter if you want to limit your audio. So uh, stop it from going above a certain dB level. That's always handy. Multiband compression, uh, pretty hardcore. Usually you use this for music to compress different frequencies in your audio can end up giving the listener a headache, so I can either remove it, or of course you can mute out any of these effects by clicking the mute icon like so. And then we'll go into noise reduction. Cog here to open up the settings down to 0% or up to 100%. Obviously adding noise reduction reduces the quality of your audio. Use with caution, only really if you're working from a noisy environment. Again, this is something I wouldn't usually go for. My three settings would be dynamics, DS and EQ. And just to look again at the dynamic settings, these are my settings. Your mileage may vary, but feel free to start from this point and uh, help your audio sound better using Wirecast Pro. Now, of course, if you find any other techniques, feel free to let me know about them in the comments to this video. And uh, really enjoyed doing this video. If you'd like to see more tutorials on Wirecast or indeed ScreenFlow, great bit of software I use to edit my uh, on-screen tutorials, let me know down below in the comments about that too. Oh! <laughs>